Hi, I'm Ian here at SNS Diesel Motorsport. Uh, we're going to start off on our install video here for the disaster prevention kit for the Ford 6.7 Power Stroke. Start off with an unboxing, um, just kind of showing you what should be in the kit. Probably a good idea to do this step before you tear the truck apart, just to make sure that everything's in the kit um, and that you're ready to go. So have a filter here. The filter head is retained in the box with a plastic cap on the back. So you can just kind of twist that off. That will remove your filter head from the box. Go ahead and take out our high pressure feed or low pressure feed line here with the bypass block. Have a set of instructions. Have our return lines. And then we have our hardware kit. I'm just gonna lay this out. Have some of it on the bench already. So, set our box aside. Okay. So I guess first off, just with this whole install, cleanliness is, is a big key factor. Um, so really when it comes out of the box, uh, or at least before you go to put it on the truck, you can kind of decide when you do it. But not a bad idea. Go ahead and pull these plugs out and blow this line out with compressed air. So <clears throat> just kind of hit both sides. Obviously we focus on cleanliness when we're packaging these, but this is just good practice in general. So we'll blow that line out. If we were getting ready to just put it on, we'd, we'd go straight to the truck. Uh, since we're going to set it aside, we'll just go ahead and put our caps back in. Set it over here. Uh, next thing, we could subassemble our filter head. As you can, it, this is going to be the end product. So we need to get our fittings out. On the filter head itself, on this bottom surface, you don't want to scratch it because it is a, a ceiling surface for the filter. And then there are two O-rings in the bag with the fittings. Go ahead and slide those on. And then it's a good idea to put a little lubricant on those O-rings and then go ahead and thread them in. Uh, this is an O-ring seal, so you don't need to tighten this a lot. 10 foot pounds is fine. You need a 15 millimeter socket. So just kind of snug these up and you're good to go there. I um, also want to mention, so on these quick connects, they have two O-rings inside that, that seal, and so you don't want to damage the sealing surface on these fittings either for the, the quick connects. Also, you could blow out the return hoses, but the key, the main hose is this feed hose uh, that's going to the pump because this is downstream of the factory filter. Um, so as you can see, we pretty well have our filter head pulled together, or we got our fittings in. We need to put our isolators in. So these help to prevent any vibration from being transmitted back into the vehicle. So we'll thread those in. Again, they just need to be hand tight. They'll bottom out against the filter head here. Then we'll move to our other hardware bag here and pull out our bracket. And there's a few different bolts with the bracket. A few different lengths um, because you have the bolt for the, a shorter bolt for the 11 to 16 and a longer bolt for the 17 and up vehicles. You also have a spacer and a washer for the 17 and up. And we'll show that install a little more detail on this 2021, how to mount this filter head to the cowl for the 17 plus version. So we'll spin these on and you need a 7 16 to tighten these up and just snug them up. Okay, now your filter head is ready to go on the vehicle. Uh, next, I'll move over here, um, kind of was already talking about cleanliness, but when you're taking this 
metering unit out, uh, cover it further in the, in the video when we're taking it out of this truck, but you wanna clean this surface really well around the metering unit before you pull it out. Um, some people call this fuel control actuator as well, but you want to clean this off, brake clean, spray it down, and then hit it with compressed air, uh, even a wire brush if you can, get any, any um, debris away from this surface because when you pop this metering unit out, you do not want <clears throat> any debris to fall into that inlet. Um, if it does, does happen, it has happened occasionally, um, we, you can send us the pump, we can sometimes fix it, but basically the issue is that you can get that debris into uh, the inlet or outlet valves and then that causes one of the cylinders to quit working and you'd be low on pressure. So don't want to let any debris into this surface and, and I cover kind of how to clean this further in the video. So uh, once you do have it out, then you're going to put your bypass block in to the pump. Oh, put your metering unit into the bypass block as such, and then put your bypass block into the pump. Like that. So actually it'd be like this. That's actually in the vehicle. So we put that in and we provide two slightly longer bolts than the factory bolts because we do have this bypass block that's spacing it up slightly. Um, so you would install then the bolts provided with the SNS kit. Additionally, um, another just topic to cover here is on the 11 to 14 trucks, the way the intake plenum is designed here, it is a fairly tight clearance to this connector here. Uh, the way this would sit on the truck going towards turbocharger being towards the truck here. Uh, this plenum will sit very close to the top of this metering unit connector like this. And you can have potential, there's a potential on some vehicles for interference. It seems there's a lot of uh, casting variation from Ford on this component. Um, you can also see there is a, a casting line here that you, that's a kind of a raised rib. You want to grind off, if you have an interference issue, like we say, some trucks do, some trucks don't. It seems to be an 11 to 14 thing. Uh, you want to grind off this rib to provide a little more clearance. So that's just kind of a tip. Like I say, it does seem to be that there's a lot of vehicle to vehicle variation with that intake plenum and the clearance to the top of the metering unit connector. So check that. Um, if, you, if you remove the rib and there's still not enough clearance, you can add a washer underneath these standoffs to try to, to raise the intake up ever so slightly. So. Um, lastly, I mentioned we want to have the factory section here. So this is a specific to the 2020 plus models. There is a factory line that is heat shrunk to the factory feed hose here that goes up then to the filter. Uh, what you need to do there is, and I'll show in the video the details of getting this off, but you need to heat this up and cut it off and then we provide a, a new feed hose here to clip our quick, quick, quick disconnect to the red one here would click to that. So that's just unique, I guess, to the 2020 plus product would clip there. So like I said, we'll cover a lot of the details more in the install video here, but I wanted to hit some of the high level topics, uh, do a quick unboxing of the CP4 disaster prevention kit from SNS Diesel Motorsport. Okay, we're gonna start off on the install on this CP4 disaster prevention kit on this 2021 F-250. Uh, this would be similar install instructions to like 2017 and newer uh, pickup. So we'll start off, I'm just gonna disconnect our negative battery cables. Just loosen them up and they just lift off. Tuck it out of the way. Same on the other, other battery. Just set those to where they can't retouch the battery. Make connections, so set those off to the side. 
We're going to start off by removing some of these lines that are covering over the top just to get them out of the way. So start with the coolant line here, overflow tank. Just going to clamp it off and then you're going to undo this clamp here. If you tighten it enough, it'll actually lock itself open and kind of just slide it back out of the way. It's going to be a little bit of residual coolant. Take the pliers here, let's just gently twist on this hose to get it broken free. Give it a little pull, that should come off. Have a little bit of coolant, catch it in your rag. Come over here, start unclipping this line. Across here you got the coolant line, or the vacuum line here as well. So let's get on the other side of it. We'll take it off in just a second. We'll unclip the vacuum line from the coolant line here. And then if you rotate this and pull at the same time, you can get that Christmas tree out, ideally without breaking it. If you break it, you'll have to just zip tie that later. Take this off here. And then we have another Christmas tree back here. Twist it around, get it to pop out. Creeper's a little bit in the way here, but to roll this over, we're just gonna tuck this line over here out of our way. Now we're gonna get the vacuum line. Got some quick connects here, push down on this quick connect, break it loose. Probably hear a little bit of air come out of that when you unclip it. Another one down here, removes this vacuum line, just set it out of the way. Okay, next we want to go after some of our connectors. It's good to have a nice pick set for getting some of these electrical connectors. Most of them have a lock. So like here we slid the lock back and then we will disconnect it from there. This is so we can get our intake manifold off. So anything that's connected to this intake manifold, that's what we need to release. There's another connector back here. It's with a white lock. Again, hit that lock first, then push on the white connector that you've unlocked. On this one, the, the lock is actually the push tab. Additionally, we have another connector underneath here for the map sensor, uh, but we need to take this guard, this shield off so that we can access it. So we'll grab some eight millimeter uh, socket, or in this case, probably an eight millimeter ratchet wrench, get that removed. So now we remove the cover over the top of the map sensor there, uh, just some eight millimeter bolts. So we'll set those up here right now. And now we can get to this connector to unplug it. So again, you wanna slide the lock back first and then clip, squeeze that lock. That releases the connector and the connector comes off. We can then set these connectors off to the side um, there is one, actually there's a stanchion here that needs to be pulled up and off of this stud on that wiring harness to get it back out of the way because we will need to remove that nut there as part of the intake removal. Uh, next step here, let's go ahead and take off. Here we've already loosened this up, but this is seven millimeter to take off the intake Plumbing going from the air filter to the intake manifold section here. So we're going to pull that off. Pull this off. Set it off to the side. There's also another, so there's a wire here. So we're getting things unclipped. Temperature sensor for the EGR. It is clipped underneath here. And there is a connector that's holding that on. Again, grab our pick. This one is a red lock. We're gonna slide the lock back. Then we push on the black part of the connector that's above the lock and we can unplug it. That gets the sensor unplugged, but it is still attached to the uh, lower plenum here, the plastic plenum. 
So we're gonna have to get that connector loose so we can get the EGR pipe out. So that is a Christmas tree style, or it actually slides out. You can see the connector here slides out of a male piece that's clipped to the below the intake manifold here. So you just wanna slide that forward towards the fan and it will come out of that holder there. So that'll allow us to remove that EGR pipe. Okay, one tip and trick that I wanna cover before I put the intake plenums back on is this would be your lower intake plenum. It's flipped over normally like this, right? And on this EGR pipe that we talked about upon removal, this clip sits down here underneath this lower intake plenum. And there's kind of two ways to get it off. Um, there, it's like a Christmas tree. This, in theory, would push out. Um, the, but it's, again, it's under here um, when you're actually disassembling things. I just kind of want to show how to get this to slide off of this connection uh, so that you don't have to break this and then just zip tie it later. That's really one option if it does break. But um, if you try to pull forward on this connector, which would be forward towards the fan, doesn't really want to go unless you kind of pry it back. And But if you can get a little pick in here, hopefully you can kind of see maybe on the GoPro there. If I lift up this tab, then this piece will slide forward. Um, it's basically sitting on this intake manifold, kind of slides in and then clips. So if you can get that to free up, you can just slide this piece forward and then that's what allows you to get your EGR pipe out on the disassembly side. Um, if you absolutely can't get it, uh, like I said, if it breaks, you can always zip tie it back on later. Um, if you absolutely can't get it, you could also just kind of put this with the intake manifold section as you're bringing those plenums out if you wanted to just leave this connected uh, down here. But what I wanted to cover was this is how you slide it off without breaking it when it's under here and you really can't see it very well. Wanted to kind of let you know what that connector looks like and that it basically slides on there. And if you can get in, in front of it here, lift it up and then what would be pulling it towards the fan from underneath you can slide it forward and get it released that way so just a little tip and trick that would be upon disassembly but before i put the plenum back on i wanted to cover that quickly in general on the this project working on the the fords or really anything good to have a, a good set of extensions uh, the wobble socket extensions can be helpful in some cases or like a quarter inch universal can also be helpful. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna use uh, this long wobble extension to access this lower EGR bolt. And we're gonna take this EGR pipe out next here. So we'll get that on there, break it loose. So we used our wobble socket and our eight millimeters to take out, to take out these eight millimeter bolts. Eight millimeter socket this is our EGR pipe. Uh, you'll see these, the gaskets, metal gaskets are retained. So they just make sure those come off and then we'll set this aside. Next, we're gonna remove the dipstick tube here just to get it out of the way. So it is a 10 mil, 10, two 10 millimeter bolts, one in the back here. We will run that out. There's a stud and a nut, but also 10 millimeter. Run that out. And then we will take dipstick tube, kind of pick it up off that stud and just set it back out of the way. This will allow access to these back bolts for this upper intake plenum. Next, we're gonna remove this hot side intercooler pipe here, which is a seven millimeter on this clamp. So this 
position that up on the where it attaches to the intercooler itself there. And then we need to take one screwdriver will work, but two makes it a little easier to pop this clamp up. So we want to enter on one side and kind of roll the screwdriver around, enter the other side of the clamp, roll the screwdriver around until the clamp pops up and out. and stays released. And once we have it popped out, should be able to just pull it. Maybe get this bottom one opened up a little better. It's not staying out. Okay, once we get this clamp popped up, wire clamp here, it has to be just right. Kind of take your two screwdrivers and open it up. If it's just right, it'll pull off here, come unseated. And then kind of pop that off the rest of the way and work off this lower pipe by turning on it. Oh, that one's pretty tight. Okay, so we're getting this pipe out. If it is stuck, like sometimes just from the heat, the silicone here will stick to the, the intercooler. You just have to take a pick or something and make sure you don't put a hole in your boot, but kind of work around that boot a little bit to loosen it up. And you can kind of give it a good yank, twist it a little bit, should come off there. Set that aside. Next, we're gonna take off the hot side intercooler pipe. And for this is where long extensions can be helpful. So that clamp is down there, good ways. So we'll get that on there. You can get your hand down there, loosen it up. Once we're loose, you can try to wiggle that pipe. Get it broke free. Okay, that came off pretty easily on the bottom of the intercooler there. On the top, we need to pull this connector up. You can use a pick or a trim tool Try to force this up out of here without breaking it. There we go. Try that up. And then on this connector, we can kind of use our pick since we've got it to push right here to open up that connector and pull it off. So now we can take off our hot side intercooler pipe. Take the pick. We need to get this wire clamp out of here. So it's retaining that. We need to pop it off at the bottom as well. And once we have it out of the groove, you can kind of roll it around if you need to, bring it back to the top. Once we have it out of the groove all the way around, you kind of put it in this other groove that's next to it that so doesn't clamp it. It's a good storage spot for that. Just roll it around a little, okay. And we can pull the hot side pipe off here. And we can take it and set it aside. All right, next we're gonna take off the intake throttle here. Uh, this is only needed on the, the newer trucks, like 17 and above, to remove this intake throttle, and that's to facilitate easier removal of the intake plenum here. On the 11 to 16, you do not need to remove the intake throttle because you remove the intake plenum upper and lower as two separate pieces. On the 2021 here, we are going to be removing both the in lower and upper intake as one piece. And this intake throttle needs to be removed, otherwise it wants to catch on the fan bracket here. So we're going to go ahead and take that thr intake throttle off. First, we need to re remove the connector here, which has a red lock. Then we'll just push on the tab below the lock to get that connector off. And then we have four eight millimeter bolts that need to be removed to pull the intake throttle here. So now we're gonna go ahead and remove the intake throttle here. And there is a gasket. Kinda wanna make sure that doesn't fall out, get lost or anything, if it's not retained. And there goes the bolt, luckily it hit the floor. So we're in business. Okay, next we're gonna remove the crankcase blow-by hose right here. And it goes back to the filter, a crankcase filter back here, this big box. 
and Ford has designed this to be broken basically intentionally when you when you try to remove it um, but you can get it off first we need to take this sleeve off that just by cutting it off and then we have some tabs on here that we'll need to pry up and stick something under them because there's three of them and you can't lift them all at the same time so you could use uh, some TIG wire this just cut kind of the toothpick length you could use toothpicks um, you could use um, basically anything that's long and straight and then we will need to pry up on those tabs. So let's just grab one of these. Pry up on the tab. It is plastic, so you gotta pry a little bit gently, but you have to pry it up enough to wedge something under it. Okay. I think we're actually gonna move over to the TIG wire. This is a little more thin than the what I have in it there. Pry that up. Nope. Pry that up. Okay. So we'll pry up on this tab, first one here, and we will slide a piece of TIG wire underneath it, being careful not to break the tab, flex it too much. It is plastic. Then we're going to roll this over get to our next tab. It's a little bit tricky because you have to hold this tube over. Slide that in there. Now I've got two of our tabs pried up. TIG wire works pretty good because it's thin enough. Something that's very thick may not work as well. And then we need to get our third one, which we can just do with our pick. We flip it up. And then we can remove that crankcase breather hose without breaking it. And we can go ahead. It'll slide back on because it's tapered there. So we can go ahead and remove pieces that we're using to hold those tabs open. And we'll be ready to go back together. Now that we've removed our crankcase blow-by hose, now we can go ahead and remove our on-engine filter here. We'll start by, actually this connector, all the Ford connectors are different. I'll try to roll this up where you can see it. So this particular connector, these tabs need to go back and then push for up. Don't try to pry this connector straight up. You, you could easily break it. Those tabs need to go away from the filter head and then up. And you can remove that. There may be some residual fuel. This is the return side connector and we can go after the next one which it has two ears that stick out of the bottom you basically get this twisted a little bit okay push them in the towards the middle and then push up and that releases that connector so again that one's different it, you feel the tabs on the bottom push towards the middle of the barb there and then push up and that releases that connector okay last one here also has barbs but these go out and then slide up and you need to slide that connector all the way to the top to allow it to release so all three of those connectors are a little bit different and how they release. And there'll be a little bit of residual fuel in at least the two larger ones you want to catch with a rag. Once we get our connectors off, then we can go ahead and take our filter itself, turn it towards the crankcase here, put a little bit of fuel, then lift it up so you go back to the left, turn it to the left until it stops, 
and then pull it up. Now that we have our filter out of the way, fuel filter, we are going to go ahead and remove the filter bowl. Uh, there's four eight millimeter bolts that we need to remove to take this bowl out and get it out of the way. And the reason we're gonna take the bowl itself out is because it's, it's trapping the upper intake manifold in the truck in its current location. So we're gonna have to get it out of the way so that we can get that upper plenum mount. Okay, we already hit, took this bolt here out and we need to take it out so that we can move this, this, the low pressure feed line towards the front of the truck just enough to get this front bolt access to the front bolt here and the fuel filter housing. So we'll pull that off. filter bowl out. So next we're going to pull the intake manifold bolts on both the upper and the lower plenums here. On these newer trucks we'll remove both pieces together as, as kind of one piece um, and that's mainly all eight millimeter bolts here in the back. Uh, we've already removed our dipstick tube is loose and then we have some 10 millimeter bolts here holding the lower intake plenum on. Uh, additionally some of these back bolts, eight millimeters in the back are fairly difficult to get to, uh, especially the one here under this pressure sensor bracket. And it is helpful to have a uh, flex head ratchet in this particular case to access that back bolt. So I'll go ahead and zip all these bolts out and then we'll cut back in and I'll show you removing these two uh, intake manifolds as one piece. Okay, I've got all the bolts pulled out of this upper and lower intake manifold. I wanted to cover a couple of things. Uh, one thing that's pretty handy is I found that this length wobble extension on just a regular 8 millimeter socket worked the best for the back bolt back here under the pressure sensor that's pretty difficult to get to. Uh, really helps to have the right tool there. Uh, additionally, I, I didn't mention previously, this long stud over here is a 12 millimeter. And as you can see, this little black retention piece came out of the, the manifold uh, with the bolt, which is fine. I uh, just wanted to kind of mention that there is a retention piece on all these bolts. So you can kind of leave the bolts in and pull them up and they should kind of stay there, which is what I did on the back bolt back there. I just pulled it up until it kind of holds itself up. Or if you want to go ahead and pull the bolts out, uh, just make sure either that retention piece comes with it or if it tries to pop out of the hole on the manifold, just kind of push it back in if it, if it stays in there and the bolt comes out. Um, the only other trick I did, it was the oil dipstick tube here is over the top of the manifold, can, can sometimes get in the way. So I zip tied it over to this grounding strap over here just to hold it off to the side. So I'm gonna kind of tighten that up slid down on me here. So that'll hold your dipstick tube unless you have a, an assistant that can hold it off to the side for you. So that being said we can go ahead and there is connected to the turbo on this plastic lower plenum there is a clamp it's a seven millimeter, a seven millimeter socket. You can loosen that up and that will allow the lower manifold here to come off of the compressor. And then on the upper, I guess the other thing I'll mention, I've left the map sensor in there, um, so you don't have to take it out, but you do kind of have to wrestle these two pieces out together. So that kind of got 
got that free over there. This is where having my dipstick tube out of the way was helpful. And hopefully I can get this turned. Bring the upper out. And then kind of, they really kind of almost come out together, really. So there's upper and lower intake manifolds removed. That allows us to get to the metering unit on the top, top of the fuel pump. Okay, one thing I'll mention on this plastic compressor inlet plenum here is that when you pull this off, that probably the ring, this rubber ring around the compressor inlet that will likely stay on the turbo. But what we wanna do is pull that off, put it back in our plenum so that we're ready for reassembly. And that, so that seals properly upon reassembly. So just go ahead and pull that off and we'll set our plenum aside. Okay, now that we have access to the metering unit on the top of the fuel pump, this is where I'm gonna pause and say that cleanliness is key here. Um, once you remove that metering unit, you cannot let any debris fall into the inlet of that pump. Um, if you do, it could cause multiple issues, but uh, basically any debris going through the system here is downstream of the fuel filter and obviously then is either gonna get stuck in the pump or potentially get stuck in your injectors. So at this point, what you wanna do is, is take some brake clean. This particular truck uh, doesn't have a lot of miles, pretty new, so it's not super dirty, but we're gonna hit it with some brake clean there and we're gonna take compressed air and blow this off really well. Okay. This engine bay in general is pretty clean. This really hasn't been used much as a work truck. Um, if it was pretty dirty, uh, probably would be a good idea to put rags in the uh, in the intake manifolds, the sections there over the valve covers, just to prevent any debris from getting in there. But um, like I said, we got every, all the debris removed around the metering unit, so now we can go ahead and remove that. We'll start off by disconnecting the connector on the top here, which you have to slide the lock back, then push down on the lock, and then go ahead and slide your connector back there. Then we have two T25 bolts on the top and it does help here to have a, a long reach T25 so that we can get it in between this crossover pipe casting and down into that metering unit bolt. We'll remove that one. We can actually leave that if we're careful and just take it out with the metering unit. We'll go ahead and pull this one out. So just remember, when you get to this point, cleanliness is key. We don't want to drop anything into the, meat, into the inlet of the pump here. So as you bring this out, I'm gonna go ahead and grab this bolt. Yeah, I might leave it. So it's an O-ring, you can see that bolt will stay in there. When you go back in with the bypass block, um, it does help to go ahead and put that bolt in first because it's a little bit hard to fish it down in there unless you have a magnet uh, after the fact. And you can see this is why I cleaned this off. There's gonna be fuel come up out of here and if there's anything on this surface, has the potential to get back down into that bore. If you would get something into that bore and you can visually see it, take a shop vac with a, with a small tube on it and clean out that, that bore really well. Don't wanna get anything into the inlet of the pump. So now we can go over and grab our plumbing for our CP4 disaster prevention kit. Okay, I wanted to cover a couple more things here. We had talked about bringing the metering unit out of the top of the pump there. Uh, you want to look at the screen on the metering unit and you want to look for debris in that screen. If there is debris, then installing our disaster prevention kit is not the right fix um, because our kit protects the rest of the fuel system from uh, the pump, the, a failing CP4. And if you have debris 
in the metering unit screen, you already have a failed CP4 pump and the debris has already uh, gone to the rest of the fuel system. So if you're installing this as a preventative measure, which is what it was designed for, check this screen, no metal in the screen, you proceed forward. If uh, you suspected maybe a CP4 failure and you decided to install this kit, you see metal in that screen, um, you're really going to need to proceed as if it was a CP4 failure, which is going to require uh, replacing at least the injectors, then the rest, the rest of the systems that system that Ford recommends to replace fuel rails, injectors, um, so forth. Fairly intensive uh, failure, which is why you want to put this disaster prevention kit on before the failure occurs. Uh, with this kit, if failure does occur, you're only looking at needing to replace the pump, uh, CP4 itself, and replace the return filter that comes with the SNS kit and you are back in business. Uh, the other topic I wanted to cover is, is debris cleanliness that we are kind of already talked about, um, but I have this other pump here. So um, if you do have debris up here on the face, which likely you will uh, in most trucks that are being worked out in the field, um, what you want to do is, is after you've already cleaned it as best you can with the metering unit in uh, with air and, and uh, brake clean, then once you have it out, put a rag or something down in here. It'll, the first one will probably get soaked with diesel fuel, so pull it out, put another one in there. And with this, the pump in the truck, uh, go ahead and you can try to scrape the debris away from the hole. So you want to take like a razor blade or a scraper and only start at the middle and make sure you're going away from the feed on the pump. And pull that debris away and then take a shop vac or something and remove it and then you can use that shop vac to either suck out your rag when you're complete cleaning that face or you can take it out with a pick. Um, like I said if you do get any debris in there you have to try to get it out if you let that get into the rest of the fuel system it can cause problems. Okay next I want to cover a topic that only applies to the 2020 and up trucks the 2020 plus, which this being a 2021, uh, we'll need to do this. So with the SNS disaster prevention kit, we supply this section of hose. Like I said, it's only utilized on 2020 plus, um, and it's so that we can get to a barb that we can connect our kit to, make it more universal across the different platforms. So in order to install this, we need to remove the section of uh, factory hose here, um, which is heat shrunk on here, heat shrunk vinyl tube, and we're gonna need to heat it back up. So you could use a heat gun. Um, it's a little bit tricky in this tight space. Uh, additionally, if you wanted to take this line section out of the truck and do it on a workbench, you could do that as well. But if you're gonna do it in the truck, uh, get something, one, clean the area really well because this is where fuel is at from the fuel filter. Um, clean the area well so you don't have any residual fuel. And then Put like a welding glove or something to protect both the crankcase hose here um, and kind of just the rest of the, the system from the heat. And then what you would need is some sort of heat source, uh, just a small heater, not a big, nothing, not a big torch or anything, um, either a butane torch or this little lighter. And we're going to light, heat up that area, and then we're going to take a razor blade and put a little slit, uh, and then heat it up some more, and that slit will kind of open up and then we should be able to pull this off with some pliers. So that's the process. We're gonna go ahead and apply some heat here. Now there are two barbs that you have to get it off of. So you wanna kinda of try to apply heat to the system here. A little bit on the top, try to get the back a little bit. You're trying to soften up this hose so we can get it off. Once you get some heat to it, you can kind of take a razor blade and don't put, use a lot of force because you don't want to nick the metal, but you do want to make a couple cuts into this hose while it's soft and just applying very little pressure here. Try to make some cuts and that'll help this hose to open up, make it easier to remove. So I'm going to continue to heat here. You can see there that slit that I made is starting to open up. So let's go ahead and take a razor blade. We've kind of got that nice and 
hot and gummy. Let's see now if we can take some pliers and if we can move that joint a little bit. So we'll rock it back and forth. We're obviously not reusing this, so we don't, oh, we're too worried about damaging anything here. We're just trying to get this hose off. Once you've got it kind of worked loose, try to pull it off. Probably need to apply some heat again. We've lost our heat. There we go. We'll have some residual fuel there. So. And so that's the removal of that tube and we are gonna be replacing it with this tube that has a quick connect fitting on it. And we'll do that next here. Okay, now we're back installing our low pressure uh, feed on the low pressure fuel line section. We just took off the section of hose that, like I mentioned before, was only utilized on 2020 plus. Um, so we've gotten that off. We're now gonna install this fitting from the kit. We're gonna put a little lube on these pieces just to make it easier to slide. And we're gonna slide it over. I mentioned previously when we were getting our previous section off, we didn't make any big gouges in the ceiling surfaces on either of these barbs. Uh, intent making sure not to do that on the heating process and then once we slide these on like I mentioned there are two barbs and we want to put the clamp you can see you can feel them basically in the hose we want to push it on and we want to put the clamp behind the second barb basically right there and we want to put a quarter inch ratchet a quarter inch socket works fine here and then we're gonna tighten up this hose clamp. Get out of the screen here. Nut driver would obviously work well also. And we're just gonna tighten this up. Like I said, kind of just beyond that last barb. And snug that up. Clamp, and that is our 2020 hose section installed, which will allow the SNS fuel feed line to come in, like we were talking about, parallel feed to the metering unit. And this is where it's going to click in, feed the bottom end of the pump through the factory low pressure feed line. Okay, so now we have removed all of our components. Uh, we pulled the FCA or metering unit out. We've looked at the screen for debris. No debris here, so we know we're installing this kit on a healthy CP4, um, which then the kit will protect the rest of the system if the CP4 were to ever fail. And now we can, one thing I didn't cover in the unboxing was these two O-rings. There's a larger and a smaller one. The smaller one is the same size that goes on the fittings that go in the filter head. So there'll be three of the small O-rings, two of them go on the filter head fittings. One of them goes on to the bypass block at the base here. The larger O-ring goes in this larger groove in the base of the bypass block. And that groove kind of retains it on the OD there. So you can see here, that smaller O-ring, larger O-ring. So. Now we can install our bypass block. So when you are installing this bypass block, it's easier to go ahead and insert this bolt through first because it, it's a little bit tricky to get that bolt started after it's in, in there with the coolant crossover. So we've started our bolt. It is a four millimeter head. So we have a, a long four millimeter Allen, a, a four millimeter Allen socket with a quarter inch extension will also work, um, but it is tight quarters down here. So go ahead and try to just push our first O-ring in and see if we can get this one bolt started in the threads. We'll kind of start to push it down in the bore. Definitely wouldn't hurt to lubricate those O-rings. Um, maybe with either diesel fuel, engine oil, Kind of a silicon based lubricant and he would be fine for those o-rings so now we're going to grab our other bolt and we'll grab our torque wrench and we're going to go to 60 inch pounds with these 
again, that's 60 inch pounds, not foot pounds. Don't wanna pull an incredible hulk on these, break them off. We'll pull the threads out of the CP4. That will be bad. So we're gonna kinda get those ran down. Take our torque wrench. Again, we're set to 60 inch pounds with a four millimeter Allen head. Doesn't take much, there we go. We got that one, torque the front one. Okay, so we're good there. Now we have our bypass block and our metering unit installed. We will next go ahead and connect the electrical connector here. Again, the lock is pushed back from when we removed it. And I'll slide it on, push the lock forward. Metering unit's now installed. Okay, now that we have our bypass block and our metering unit installed, we can kind of go ahead and start to route our bypass block feed line here. Uh, you may notice some wires here, just kind of extra wires. Uh, we've added those so that we can monitor current to the FCA directly. Uh, that's for just engineering testing. As you probably saw in the intro of this video, we're gonna be failing this pump. So uh, that's what this is for. Uh, not, wouldn't normally be on there. Um, there. That video will be linked to this video if you want to see the CP4 fail in this truck. But for the purpose of this install video, what we're going to do is go ahead and pull our plug out. And then we can connect to the 2020 hose here that this SMS supplies. Click our quick connect on there. Press down on the red lock, make sure we're tight, and we're good there. This, once we get the filter back on, we'll go ahead and click that into the filter, fuel filter. But for right now, we'll just uh, leave it there and have some zip ties and so forth that'll hook to these whenever we get our crankcase breather hose. Uh, the zip ties are supplied with the SNS kit. So I'll show you that when we get there. I just wanted to go ahead and get this clicked on. I guess the other thing, probably let's cover before we get too much stuff in the way, um, is back here. This is uh, the return line quick connect uh, that's going back, well, coming up from the injectors. And uh, then this is going back to the fuel tank. So we are going to unclip this, and you do that by just sliding these tabs straight back and go all the way. That'll bring the whole connector back and unlock it. There's no button or anything to push. And you just pull that up off there. Now, what we need to do is rotate this inside this vinyl tubing. Rotate this fitting up so that we can more easily connect the SNS fitting. You can hear it's a little snug. If it really doesn't want to go, uh, don't twist it so hard that you kink your factory vinyl line there. Um, just apply a little bit of heat and that should allow this connector to spin around. Um, once it's spun around, this is where the return filter will loop in here, loop through the return filter. Well, actually it'll connect here, loop through the return filter, and then come back into here to go back to the tank. So that is how we're basically filtering the fuel com coming, returning from the pump. If it is um, putting metal into the return system, it runs through our return filter that'll be mounted up here uh, jump, jumping from this factory line that's running back here through the return filter and back to the tank through here. So we'll connect a couple lines up here, but just wanted to show that being disconnected before we got some of the parts back in the way. Okay, now now we're ready to install our upper and lower intake plenums here. Uh, you want to make sure that this clamp is loose, but that it's retained in its bracket here so it doesn't slide around on you. Uh, unfortunately, you can't get this end, then the upper, the lower, and then the upper end. Kind of have to put them in together uh, just due to space constraints. So we're going to set that kind of in there. Uh, you mentioned as well this ring. Uh, if it doesn't come off the compressor, go ahead and take it off and put it back in here. Lubricate it so it's easier to slide on the compressor nose there. 
also take and lubricate these press and place seals under here. Additionally, make sure that these surfaces are clean and that the mating surface on the uh, intake manifold over the valve cover is also clean. It's gonna be some EGR soot, but um, just wanna put a little lubricant on there. Now we need to, also you'll notice this one, I've got all the bolts out except this back one here, the very back corner on the passenger side I've left in. So and you probably just wanna pull it up to kinda of where it holds itself up so it doesn't get in your way. And then try to snake your upper intake over the top of the lower. And then try to bring them down and in together. Like that, and then once you get the upper kind of in place, we can go ahead and wiggle the lower onto the nose of the compressor until we get these bolt holes right here in the lower to line up with our coolant crossover. Then we know we're good on the compressor there. You can check around. We've got our upper close to in place. This back bolt has dropped down on me. And so that is causing some problems. the intake to let it push that bolt back up get it in position and then we can grab our intake manifold bolts we have the 10 millimeters we have some 8 millimeters and we'll go ahead and grab those and get them tightened up okay I'm just gonna cover real quickly where these bolts go this longest one with the 10 millimeter longest one with the 10 millimeter head it's gonna go here on your upper plenum. And I'll kind of get that started by hand. The other two that are 10 millimeter heads are the same length. So they go into the plastic lower plenum here. Get those going. And then there's the one that is a 12 millimeter, uh, kind of a 12 millimeter head with a stud on it. That goes on the driver's side in the tall standoff here of the upper intake plenum. So we can get that started. Then we can just go and grab our eight millimeter plenum bolts and get those installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up the two bolts on the plastic plenum first, or the 10 millimeter head bolts kind of clamp down that plastic plenum. So I'm gonna hit those. And then at that point, whenever you get a chance, you can go and tighten up your clamp back here at the turbo compressor. I believe it's a seven millimeter or a flathead screwdriver to go tighten up that clamp. And then I'm gonna go tighten up all four bolts back here, connecting this upper plenum to the intake manifold here. Get that tight, all those tightened up, kind of in a circular pattern, crisscross circular pattern there, and then I'll come back and tighten this front one on the, well, close to where the uh, intake air throttle's at. I've got it started, so it's holding my position. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up those to get the gaskets to seal well, and then I'll come and tighten this one last. So this is where you'll need a 12 deep well, 12 millimeter socket deep well to get that studded bolt on the manifold, uh, plenum. Then over on this side, you'll need an eight millimeter deep well socket to get the studded one on this side as well. Okay, when you're installing the upper and lower plenum here, obviously these back bolts are pretty difficult to get to. Uh, ratcheting, um, flex head ratchet definitely helps. Additionally, I guess if you were gonna, difficult to torque these, and you just wanna snug them up, you do have a press in place seal there that's going to do the sealing for you so don't get crazy with tightening those up and then uh, as far as these 10 millimeter bolts can go to 18 foot pounds to tighten those up 
Uh, if you want to torque these back ones, uh, it's 89 inch pounds on the eight millimeter uh, headed bolts. So again, so it's 89 inch pounds and then 18 foot pounds on these 10 millimeter headed bolts. Okay, so we have our intake plenums back on and really the order of operation from here forward uh, on reinstall is not super critical. Um, we're gonna just go ahead and do the intake throttle next. So I put my gasket on here, the metal gasket, and Ford has put some retention features on that gasket. So if you stick two bolts in, uh, it will hold that gasket for you, which is helpful. And then you need your connector for the intake throttles down here. So that connector section of the intake throttle needs to go down so that we can plug that in. So that's the orientation of the throttle is the connector in the downward position. Just go ahead and start these. And then I believe these are torqued to 89 inch pounds as well. So again, you need an eight millimeter. And uh, you can really just snug these up, but if you want to torque them, it would go to 89 inch pounds. Okay, now we can hook up our electrical connector to the intake air throttle. So again, it does have a lock, so the lock is open, pushed back from removal. We're gonna click it on and push our lock forward. Okay, next, just to kind of get this side buttoned up a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and put the EGR um, tube back on here. And you wanna make sure at least where your gasket's gonna be sealing is cleaned up. Uh, additionally, these gaskets do retain themselves, but you kinda wanna make sure you can bend the ears down a little more if they're wanting to fall off. Um, but that makes it easier to get this in here. Your temperature sensor goes towards the fan so that you can plug it in um, underneath the plenum here like we kind of talked about already. That is the connector that's a little bit tricky to get to slide off. But we're going to get that lined up. We've got four 8mm headed bolts here. So we're going to get these lined up and then this pipe reinstalled and then we'll move on to the next component. So once you get the EGR tube tightened back up, you just need to route your wire for the temp sensor and there is a clip. Um, probably hard to see from either camera angle but it's below the bellows section on this EGR tube. And then, so that kind of holds your wire and then what holds the connector is that clip that we had talked about previously. The, the connector just slides onto it. So we're gonna slide that back on. Underneath, it's kinda right down there. Again, I know none, none of my camera angles are gonna catch that. But uh, we've got that clipped back in. Now we take the connector itself, has the red locking tab that's already opened up from removal. And we will put that on and lock the connector. So our EGR pipe and temp sensor are hooked up and ready to go. Okay, next here we're gonna install our map sensor cover on the top of the upper plenum here. A little bit tricky to get to because of the cowl. We'll get these bolts started. Okay, actually before I put that other bolt on, Let's go ahead and take our wires, pull them back forward, and get this hooked back up to the map sensor before we put our cover on. So top one here is map sensor connector, has a white lock, there's a little push pin goes in there, this connector, oh, this needs to go on this stud to hold that harness. This goes on this pressure sensor here. Lock it down. And then this that's sticking forward from the firewall goes on this connector. I don't know if my light bar is 
going to be in the way for these, but um, it's pretty self-explanatory on those. So hook our connectors back up like so. And then we can finish attaching this map sensor cover. There we go. And other than the air filter tube, that pretty well finishes up on the passenger side. So now we'll move to the driver's side install. Okay, now we're going to move to assembly of the driver's side components. We're going to kind of work back to front here on putting things back together. Um, but first we need to add the SNS remote mount filter head to the cowl. Um, this is a little bit different whether you have an 11 to 16 truck or then the 17 plus. So what I'm going to show you here is the 17 plus, um, but we provide the, the hardware for both styles there. So I'm going to set this aside and first we need to pop this cowl up because there is a bolt under here, or not a bolt, but a clip that we need to remove and that we're going to use that factory hole to mount our filter head. So pop these out, washer line, so there's the three clips and then there's a clip here as well that kind of just needs to be popped up. This has been off a time or two so it comes off fairly easy on this one. Um, but we are going to take this clip here out, so we can see if we can get it with these. If not, um, yeah, so screwdriver pick works okay. Or some pliers at this point to help, help you pop it out. Let me go grab the pliers. Okay, so you pop the center of this clip up, kind of a male stud. You can go ahead and take it out. And there's a little female section that just pulls out with some pliers. Okay, so now we're going to use, this is the hole that we're going to use to mount our SNS filter head. On this application, it will go below, and so we'll get the right hardware for that. On the 11 to 16, this filter head will actually mount on the top, um, but there's a little bit of a cutaway in the cowl. It'll mount above the steel top of the firewall on the cowl there, but so I'll get the hardware to mount this right below and be right back. So with the SNS mounting hardware provided in the kit, if you have an 11 to 16, um, you're just going to use this shorter button head flanged bolt and the nylon nut. Like I said, then it'll mount on the top of the cowl. Short bolt, not on the bottom. <clears throat> so, but for the 11, or sorry, but the 17 plus that we have here, uh, we are going to use the longer bolt, the wash or the spacer, and a washer. So we're going to put the wa and the nut actually the nylon nut will go on the bottom. But we'll start off putting the washer on the longer bolt there. And we can go ahead and just put that down through. So the washer is on the top there, just to kind of distribute the load on that plastic um, that sits above the metal there. And then we'll put the washer on, sorry, spacer on. And then we can put the bracket on. Then we'll hold our filter head there, and we can grab our nylon nut, goes on the bottom, and we'll grab some tools to tighten that up. Okay, so now we're going to tighten up the SNS filter head. I'm going to stick this under here to kind of hold the cowl up out of my way. Um, I will kind of just go ahead and say, as a safety precaution, uh, the, the plastic trim pieces here on the firewall are very sharp from Ford, so be a little careful working around them, otherwise you'll kind of cut your knuckle. Um, unless you want to be able to come in after installing this kit to your wife or girlfriend and be like, oh man, I was working real hard, busted my knuckles and everything, then uh, feel free to run your knuckles across that because uh, it will, will cut you. So I have a four millimeter Allen here on the head and a 10 millimeter socket or you could use a wrench under here 10 millimeter on the nylon nut and we just need to snug this up and try to get it positioned where it looks nice and straight with the world but it doesn't have to be crazy tight uh, that's a nylon nut so it's not going to back off and uh, we've got the washer to distribute the load on the plastic but don't want to go too tight and crack that plastic. Uh, there's, there's aluminum metal under it, but uh, and that fits that on there. 
and we are ready to hook up our return lines next here. Now we're going to connect our SNS return line, return lines here that go to the filter head. Um, there's two different lines in both cases. The blue clips will always go to the filter head fittings and the fuel flow needs to come from the outside of the vehicle towards the inside here. Um, so basically that means it needs to come from this fuel line down here, this fitting, and this is the return line. It's coming from the pump. It needs to come up into this side of the filter head and then over towards the inside of the vehicle and then connect to the return line going back to the tank. So what this effectively does is any metal that's, if your CP4 is failing and any metal that's coming back through the return system gets caught by this filter before it goes back to the fuel tank. So we'll go ahead and get this. We'll start with this one. This would basically go into the engine side, what we'll call the engine side, uh, coming back from the pump. There's the black connector going to put it on down here. So there's a few ways to route this, but um, what I've found works the best for this generation is to go ahead and put that fitting on, um, the, the hard line there, and then turn the SNS black connector, 90 degree connector, towards the back of the truck and put it kind of on top of the return line that's going back, factory return line that's going back to the tank. Um, and then we can clip it on there push the blue lock and what that does is it keeps that hose up off of this reservoir and up off of the brake um, vacuum booster back there so you don't get any vibration from this hose back through the firewall. Uh, the factory fuel tank return line that we uh, kind of holds it up that way. And then we've already spun our connector uh, to where it's kind of facing up and forward on the factory fuel tank return line and now we just let's go ahead and start at the bottom we'll go ahead on this white connector here um, it's all the way up to release it but it actually goes back in better if you go to kind of the middle position and take the male fitting here and we'll lock it in and then we'll push down on our lock and then I like to loop this through the feed line. We don't have the filter head in yet, but and we'll zip tie this up, but I like to loop it between the feed line and the oil fill here. And then connect it to the filter head and lock the blue clip on. So next we're going to reinstall the factory fuel filter bowl. And I went and left the back bolt in there. And lined up there it is start our back bolt these are eight millimeter headed bolts and then yeah there's the one down here you gotta pull the factory pump feed line back a little bit to access um, and then there's the one there's a separate fourth bolt for the clip here but uh, I'll go ahead and get these three tightened up to get the bolt from tightened back down. So the last bolt on the filter bowl here eight millimeter just goes and holds the factory feed and return line to the fuel pump. There's a little clip that, re that retains. Tighten it up. There we go. So we get there. We've already tightened our fuel bowl up here. So SNS supplies three of these hose clip zip ties, and we're going to use one of them on the this return line back here. So I don't know if you can see uh, this return line that's coming off of the in what we call engine side here um, needs to go below the tank line. It can go above it, but it works better below it. And 
what we're going to do then is use this zip tie to zip the SNS return hose that's come into this side of the filter from the engine uh, to the return back to the tank, the OEM return back to the tank. So GoPro, I think, can barely get this joint. What we're going to do is zip tie it right here uh, with one of the pr provided zip ties. So I'll go ahead and put the zip tie on the OEM line. You can do it either way, but um, works probably better on the OEM line here. Fit the zip tie, and then we will use it to hold this rubber hose. And in doing so then, we're keeping, you can kind of tighten this up, and we can keep the this hose up off of the brake master cylinder, or the kind of the brake booster back here. So, zip tie that. Kind of feed a little bit more of it this way. And cut off the extra zip tie. So next we're going to go ahead and put on the SNS supplied return filter here. It's a Donaldson P550943 filter and it's easily accessible um, anytime but we'll just go ahead and put it in since we're working back here. And as far as replacement on this filter, um, obviously if you don't have a problem with the CP4, um, it's just basically extra filtration for fuel going back to the tank that then is going to be filtered as it comes back up to the engine again by the factory filters. But uh, it's still good to replace this filter. Uh, we recommend just kind of doing it with the factory engine side filter here so you don't forget to change this out every once in a while. So we'll snug that up. I think I mentioned you want to put a little bit of oil or fuel or some sort of lubricant on that seal, um, which I had already done. And just tighten it up till it's hand tight and should be good there. Okay, the last two bolts that I have to install are these 10 millimeter Headed, uh, I've got a bolt and a nut that go and hold the dipstick tube to the plenum. Um, we really could have put these on at any time, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do it now. These are the last two bolts that I have, so at this point in the install, if you have any extra bolts laying around, uh, you missed something. But we cut our zip tie because I had that zip tied off out of the way to make it easier to remove the intake plenum when we were working on that. So we'll go ahead and just get the dipstick tube over the stud there. And we'll go ahead and start our 10 millimeter nut. And then we'll go to the back here. We have a, a bolt to install. Also with the 10 millimeter head. So we got those started by hand, so just go ahead and tighten those up. The crankcase breather hose here, um, I'm, we showed earlier how to get it off of these newer 17 plus vehicles, but to go back on it's pretty easy. Just clips right back on there. And then we'll go ahead and get our filter installed and we can also go ahead and zip tie these. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put the OEM filter. Uh, if it hasn't been replaced recently, this is a good time to just go ahead and put a new one on. Definitely want to keep up on your fuel filter maintenance, like we mentioned previously in these common rail fuel systems. Cleanliness is key. Um, we have this uh, connector that we've already opened up. Again, to get it off, it's opened all the way, but to get it back on, Works better if it's one click down. So lock that, push it on, lock it. This is where the SNS line comes around. We've still got our plug in here, so we're going to go ahead and remove that. And go ahead and take our blue connector, clip it to the factory fuel filter there. And then we have the return line 
um, that the newer, well, 17 and newer trucks have this little extra fitting coming off of there. Uh, I had this connector disconnected at some point, so we'll go ahead and reconnect it. Put our lock down. Okay, now we can get our lines zip tied appropriately here. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and zip tie this main feed line. Um, so the first one here is going to go onto the crankcase hose. This one's kind of the most critical as far as just giving this line some support. So we're going to put that there. Roll it around. That. Clip our hose. We're going to clip our hose to that. We're going to clip it down here to the oil fill. So mainly just looking down through here, make sure you have enough slack on the hose that we're not touching anything where it could rub. And then go ahead and cut that zip tie. Go ahead and put our zip tie around the oil fill. Like kind of point head up. So make sure it's tight before we cut it. And then we can clip our hose in there. And so when we have this hose routed, um, the thing we want to make sure is we don't have a pinch or anything right here. We've got a nice sweeping bend. And then this section of hose here that goes to the filter head, you can just take a regular zip tie and zip tie those two together if you want to keep it off of the oil fill there. So, in there, we've got our lines tidied up, and we are ready to install. Okay, so we're going to take our cold side intercooler pipe here. Uh, comes from the cooler back towards the intake. We're going to do it first, so we need to get our lower hose on there. and roughly get that in place. And then this is where it's good to have pretty long extension with a seven millimeter socket. So you can reach down, seven millimeter nut driver would also work. You can get your hand down there. Kind of get it on the back side here to hold your clamp. So we'll snug that up. Doesn't have to be crazy tight, but you don't want that to blow off under boost. So there we go. And top we have an o-ring seal in there and a groove with a this wire that retains it or holds it on so we need to get this wire into the groove towards the center of the engine you got to make sure it's in there all the way around which is what it's not one to do right now and then we'll kind of spin it until it finds its home and we'll give it a tug make sure we had it pushed on enough and that it's past that groove that retains that on there so that's good uh, we'll have an electrical connector here but get to that and we can get the other pipe so here we have the other intercooler pipe coming out of the 
compressor. So first we're gonna get it on cooler and then down into this pocket. We'll go ahead and get it kind of started. That's what I usually like to do. Get it arranged where it's not touching anything. So that looks pretty good. We'll tighten it up. Okay, that's a, another seven millimeter on this clamp. Let's snug that up. Okay, get snug. That's good. And we'll go ahead and lock this on. You just kind of need to make sure that the ring there is out of its popped out position where we had it off. And then in this case, you just pop it on. Make sure that that wire ring goes down, similar to this one. Give it some, give it a tug. Make sure you got it locked on there, so it doesn't blow off whenever you're making boost. And we can go get our filter pipe here. So now we're ready to put this accordion piece onto the air air box air filter. Um, I had this hose just kind of tucked under there, keep it out of the way. So kind of move it. Get this oriented properly. Go ahead and put it onto the air box, air filter box here. Just and then pushed in on the accordion. I'll let you get this lined up. Go ahead and put that on. And then we can go ahead and tighten these up. Get them kind of snug and then you just Come back and chase them with the nut driver. Don't have to be real tight. So there's that. Okay, now we're gonna install our coolant overflow hose. Um, you push that back in there. Find kind of all the factory clips that we had pulled this out of. Put it back in. And then over this way, got a clip here. Have a go ahead and put it on here on the overflow tank. And we can pop this off. We can take our clamp, it holds itself open if you squeeze it right, and we can put it back where it was. And then Kind of pop it off of that so it times it back on. And then we'll grab this vacuum line and get it situated in place here. So just clips onto here like that. So we'll go ahead and Snap it down in the vacuum pump area. Go ahead and clip that. Go ahead and clip this. Go ahead and snap that back on. Right there. And then we just have a disconnector that goes on there. Looks like we probably could have put this on before those hoses. So goes like this. Connect on there. That one doesn't have a lock. This just looks like it grabs on to that overflow hose. Okay, that completes our install of the SNS CP4 disaster prevention kit. Uh, the next thing to do, and this is very important, is to cycle the key at least three times, and each cycle needs to let the lift pump run for the full 30 seconds. Uh, that's all the longer it'll it'll run. So key on, leave the key on. Don't start the engine, just key on. 
go let it go for at least 30 seconds the lift pump will uh, time out you need to key off key back on let it run for 30 seconds and what that's doing is priming all the air out of the system because we just broke into the fuel system especially on the feed lines there and uh, we need to push fuel in and, and push the air out so that when we start the engine uh, the CP4 has fuel at the bottom end of the pump so that we don't starve the pump of fuel and uh, so like I said at least three key cycles um, or the other thing you're listening for is kind of the air bubbles you can kind of hear passing through as that lift pumps running so um, make sure minimum three key cycles um, you want all the air to be out of the system. Uh, you, if you want to go five key cycles, that's definitely not going to hurt anything. So, um, and then go ahead and fire it up. After your first key cycle though, um, actually really just probably key it on for three seconds, kick it back off, come up here and check for leaks, make sure you got all your quick connects tight and so forth, um, that you don't have any leaks, and then you can run your 30 second key cycles. So um, that'll get you going, and then you can go ahead and start the engine up, and uh, can breathe easy knowing that now if your CP4 fails, it's not going to take out the rest of your fuel system, and so you're going to go from what could have been over $10,000 replacement bill to uh, your plate now just replacing the fuel pump, replace the SNS return filter, and you're back on the road.